Hey everybody, welcome to this performance test of DCS 2.7, latest update as of May 2020. Here are the configurations we're gonna use for the desktop performance test. 2560 by 1440 maxed out on the NVIDIA 3090. I have set up a map here with a flyby pattern with both air and ground targets. Red team, blue team are going to be having a battle below as the SU-27 flies by them at various altitude. I've set the altitude to hold after the first 30 seconds, so it should hold around 300 meters as you fly above the warfare that's happening below. There are two tests, one is with clouds off and one is with clouds on, and in both cases, I did a flyby, then I saved the track, and then I replayed the track to minimize inputs from the controls. Uh, they are fairly consistent. I think at one point uh, there was a bit more acceleration, but they are fairly close in sync. You can download the test track and the uh, mission from the link in the description. Give that a go, replay it for yourself, and let me know what frame rates you're getting and which video card you're using. In this case, I am running a 10700K, 3.8 gigahertz, no overclocking, 32 gigs of RAM, and the game is running off of a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive with the latest update as of May 19th or May 20th, 2021. Keep an eye when you're running performance on the 99 percentile and that's the uh, one percent slowest frames that are coming through. In this case, they are fairly consistent. They're not jumping too much. They're staying between about 25 to 35 frames per second. Sometimes they get a little better, sometimes a little bit worse. As for the actual average frames per second, I did not capture that, but you can kind of track them as you fly by here. Of course, as soon as you enter the um, overland portion of the flight, you'll see that there is a bit more of a performance drop. That's because more trees and shadows have to be drawn. Interestingly enough, if you watch the bottom right-hand corner, or bottom left-hand corner of the cockpit, you'll see that on the non-cloudy map, they seem to jump a little bit as you fly by. And I think that's due to a different frame rate for the environment. Other than that, there is quite a few missiles being launched at the poor Spitfires that I simulated as uh, bandits here for the red air defenses to take down. It's not really a fair fight, but they're nice and slow, allowing you to really track those missile launches and also allowing for missiles to miss them so that you can actually track those explosions by the time you get there, by the time the simulation gets to it. So this is the non-VR test, 2560, 1440. Hopefully you like this video and you can always give it a thumbs up and share it. But now we're going to switch into the Reverb G2 running in VR. VR settings are on the screen. We've got the FPS VR graph on the side showing you memory usage, graphics, uh, card usage, performance and average FPS. The settings here are a little bit different than what I had in the desktop mode, however, I am running it at 100% Steam VR resolution, so I think that's 3800 by 3100, maybe not, 2560. Anyhow, 100%, uh, no uh, down sampling, uh, pixel density of 1.0, running in DirectX 12 mode. All super sampling, motion smoothing have all been disabled. This is as clean of an input as it could possibly get and it does tank quite a bit. Now, as you can see, as you pull up to the uh, ships here, there's a battle between them. The FPS does start to tank a little bit and the memory usage, check that out. It's already at 12 gigs, so it's hitting the limits of a RTX 3080 and it's definitely uh, going into the territory of needing 16 gigs of RAM, VRAM that is. I've actually flown multiplayer missions on like Growling Sidewinder where after about 20 minutes I would be at 18 to 20 gigabytes of VRAM being used. Performance, 40, 42, 43 frames per second once we go get over the uh, land areas. If you pick up a little bit of altitude your performance will also get better. Now how I've been able to get this to perform at a stable 45, 50 frames per second is instead of downscaling and downsampling the um, Steam VR resolution, what I've done is I've actually gone in and turned off anti-aliasing. 
because if you're running a Reverb G2, you've got more than enough resolution, so you can go in and disable the um, anti-aliasing from 2, which is set to here, to nothing, and you'll still get a fairly sharp image because you are getting a lot of pixels on the uh, displays of the Reverb G2. So that locks it in at about 45 frames per second with fairly low reprojection rate. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how the 3090 performs. Uh, let me know in the comments which video card you're running. If you're thinking of going into a VR environment and playing these games in VR, I gotta tell you, I was able to get this game running at about 60% downgrade in resolution using a 3060 and the Reverb G2. It still looked pretty awesome, but I wanted to crank it up and get the best I could for multiplayer. For single player, 3060, 3070 for a Reverb G2 works great, but once you go multiplayer, it gets more taxing. And of course, you wanna make sure you've got all the power you need. All right, thanks everybody. Enjoy, hopefully you're flying and staying safe.